Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Um, I'm so excited to see all of you guys again. I'm so sorry that it has been a month and a half since I actually last filmed or provided videos. We have so, so many updates. So just buckle up and here we go. Okay, so like I said before, it's been a while and I'm so sorry about that. Um, it has been a crazy month and a half because we adopted Bella July 29th and school for our school district um, started virtually on August 12th. So we really didn't have a whole lot of time post-adoption um, to really just kind of detox, decompress, um, and, and just kind of you know, in just a way, kind of breathe a little bit. We we just, I just kind of felt like we had to gear up and get ready to go. Um, and I, and the, the only comfort that I take in that is that um, almost every family in America around that time, or at least in the month of August, had to gear up and get ready for virtual school. Um, I, I would say almost every family, <laughs> probably over general, generalizing, but um, either way, you know, it's, it's been a real, just a real challenge. And then we thought that we were, that our, that our daughter was going to be virtual for the first nine weeks. Um, in fact, that was what we originally signed her up for because, um, the school, the school district that we're in, and I'm sorry, I'm kind of dealing with some sort of congestion, allergies, maybe a slight cold. So forgive me, I'm going to be stumbling on my words probably sound a little froggy in my throat. So, excuse me. <laughs> Welcome to September in Texas. <laughs> um, but back in June or July, I think it was, our a lot of the school districts in and around Houston um, asked families to choose between virtual and face-to-face -face the first nine weeks. When we chose virtual for the first nine weeks, the numbers were horrible horrible in Houston and around Houston. Um, as of right now in September, um, the middle, you know, the, the middle week of, de, of, de, of September, sorry, I'm trying to say December because I want December so badly. Um, the numbers are better. I know that um, several um, counties around Houston proper are still really struggling. Um, and then a lot of the counties outside of Houston proper are uh, not struggling as much, but they're still dealing with numbers that are concerning, but um, the numbers have begun to decrease. So that has has opened up a lot of opportunities for um, students who are in extracurricular activities. Um, it's also opened up a lot of opportunities for schools to allow more face-to-face -face students. So when our daughter started virtual school, the challenge was different than when she had to do virtual school in the spring, when COVID first hit the United States and lockdowns and quarantines were going into effect. Essentially schools were closing down, businesses were closing down. Um, the, the curriculum was very different than it was in the spring. And we were told as parents that that was going to be the case. What I don't think many of us parents anticipated were the changes that were going to be made to both types of online platforms because there were two different types for elementary, early intermediate school students, and then um, you know older intermediate school students, junior high, high school. There were a lot of changes that were made to the online platforms. And that really created a lot of confusion, internet issues, connection issues, um, also navigation issues, trying to navigate this online platform. Um, I, I mean, I, I don't consider myself tech savvy like my husband, but I even had to take um, a couple of hours to try to navigate the online platform that our daughter was expected to utilize during the first four weeks of virtual school for 2020. Uh, for the fall of 2020, not the spring, because the spring was a whole different ball game. Um, so, you know, I, I really feel for the families that are still um, trying their very best to be virtual. 
Um, the reason why we ended up switching when the time came and we were presented with the opportunity um, was because, you know, we could tell that um, our daughter was struggling with the online platform and it was really hard for her to navigate, especially with her ADHD. Um, I think, I, I think really in, in all for anyone with ADHD, ADD, it's going to be really hard for online platforms that are overly complicated. I think if they had simplified how the online platform went, that probably wouldn't have caused so many issues and probably wouldn't have had so many students switch from online to face to face. Um, and so our daughter knew she was struggling. We knew she was struggling. She knew she was struggling. And so we just kind of raised it up as a question as a family. And we actually, you know, grabbed some dinner. It was just very impromptu. It was just one of those things where I was tired. Um, you know, my husband, Sean was tired, you know, I mean, work was crazy, we, you know, and then, um, and Bella was at color guard. And so, you know, it was just kind of one of those moments where Sean was like, you want to go to Sonic? And I was like, yes, that sounds great. <laughs> um, and so we did, and we just kind of, you know, just took some time as a family to discuss that. Um, I do want to say that we have been dealing with struggles as an adoptive family that I really wanted to touch on just before this gets too long winded. Um, and I really do want to say to so many of you who have emailed us, left comments, um, and, and just really reached out in, in different, you know, I think on Instagram, I had a few people reach out to me. Um, thank you so much. First of all, I'm so sorry that I, I've, I've really just, um, I've really had a hard time responding. I just kind of feel like the last almost two months, um, because we're at the month and a half, um, point of, um, of post adoption. Um, so September 29th will be two months. <laughs> um, but for the, for the last almost two months, I just kind of feel like it's been a whirlwind. You know, I started a new job, Bella started school, my husband's working from home still. Um, and it, it just kind of feels like we've just been spinning, spinning around and around and around. Um, so I really do appreciate so many of you who have reached out, who have congratulated us and, and just poured out a lot of love and, and I've received a lot of questions. So I think one of the main questions that I keep receiving from foster and adoptive families, um, or I should say foster and foster to adopt families is, you know, what is this like adopting a teen? And what is life like? How does this work? There are so many questions. Um, I will tell you, we've had a lot of challenges post adoption, um, mostly because we had one really good week post adoption, just a beautiful, um, really kind of a mirror of what a honeymoon period is like when you first receive a placement. Um, and that week, one week post adoption was wonderful, beautiful, almost perfect, really. Um, and then things shifted and they shifted hard and it was all emotional and behavioral challenges with our daughter. Um, we are consulting with so many people right now. <laughs> we are consulting with the therapist that she sees. We are consulting with the school counselor, the school nurse, um, some close friends of ours who, um, have already adopted and have, um, adopted teenagers. Um, we even met with a new pediatrician because the old one, um, ended up closing her business during the, I would say the beginning days of COVID here in the United States. Um, so we have just been really having to just take a step back and, re and reevaluate what, and, and I say we as in my husband and I, we've had to really take a step back and reevaluate what we thought we knew, how were we handling this, um, or and and hand when I mean by this, I mean like emotional upheavals, emotional outbursts, behavioral acting out, behavioral challenges, um, and just changes. Um, you know, we as we were consulting with people, as we were trying to meet with people to understand 
how do we help her? How do we meet her where she's at? Um, the hardest piece of advice that has been given to me and my husband is we have to give this time. And we have to be real and very honest with her and, and in some way, form or fashion, bring her back to reality because she oftentimes will kind of step outside of herself and almost place herself in a, a not very realistic situation in her mind. Um, just in, about life, about relationships in life, I mean, just really anything to do with life. Um, and that can be really hard, especially when the person that you're trying to help and you're trying to reach and you love is pushing back and pushing hard and emotionally challenging you and emotionally challenging you in ways that you did not expect. Um, and I have even started back in therapy myself to try to understand how can I change my parenting style? Because um, before adoption, I would say Bella and I were getting into arguments um, at least a couple of times a week or so. Um, and I mean, we would probably argue, there were times where we would go two weeks straight arguing almost every day. And then there would be a time where like a week or two, we would argue maybe once or twice that week. Um, but the arguments became elevated. And I started realizing I needed, as a parent, I needed to change. I needed to try to make a different type of effort because as we were getting closer to adoption, she wasn't backing away. She was pushing back and she was pushing buttons and she was definitely pushing boundaries, but she wasn't pushing away from adopting. She was still moving forward. And so for me, I just kind of took that upon myself as like, wow, okay, I need to, I need to try harder or I need to try something different. Um, and so I reached out to a different counselor because I was seeing one and it wasn't that the one wasn't helping me. It just, I didn't feel like I was being given the resources and tools that were very specific for my situation. And so I was very fortunate to find another counselor um, where I was able to see this person virtually and um, this particular person provided me different mental exercises for myself where I had to um, just really kind of help decompress my own temper, my own, and, and really kind of help shift my own expectations. Um, in a way, had to teach me how to have grace and forgiveness for myself when I did get mad, when I did lose my temper. Um, and when I lose my temper, I raise my voice and I become loud. Um, and I have also cursed. So I'm not proud of that. Um, but this is just kind of my truth. This is just how, you know, I'm admitting my weakness and my fault as a parent. Um, and so that has been a real struggle for me because I am having to learn how to be different than my nature. Because by nature, um, I have a very bad temper. <laughs> so, um, really having to work hard at keeping my voice calm, uh, trying to be emotionally steady and, um, and neutral. That is a huge challenge for me, especially when, um, you know, our daughter will, will push in such a way that I feel emotionally triggered. Um, and I, I'm really, I'm only speaking for myself. I can't really speak for my husband because obviously he's a different person. <laughs> Um, I feel like, um, and he would, might disagree with me, but I feel like he deals with things, I don't know, probably a lot more gracefully than I do. <laughs> um, but we are definitely dealing with a lot of struggles right now. We're, we're definitely in the midst of a new emotional storm. And so I wanted to kind of mention that to all of you families, because I will be making a different video talking about what it's like to go through the adoption process, at least through Texas with the foster care system. And I will talk about what it's like to adopt, the process of adopting a teenager. Um, but today I really wanted to just kind of provide a, an update on how crazy it's been, um, but also to kind of let you guys know that we're going through something new and different post-adoption. And we have learned, my husband and I, that this is actually very common for a lot of families. Sometimes kids 
unleash the hidden parts of their darkness, their, their trauma, when they finally realize they're safe and they finally experience that permanency, that's when everything comes pouring out. So it isn't like we didn't have challenges and issues um, or before adoption, we, we did, but now we're dealing with something new. And, and this new requires my husband and I to change tactics, to learn new skill sets, to consult with new and different people, to understand how do we help our child and how do we encourage our child to help herself? So that I, I hope will provide many of you who have contacted me perspective that the challenges you deal with now while the child or teenager in your care is a foster child, the challenges that you deal with now may not be the exact same challenges that you deal with post adoption or in that strange sort of in-between place when reunification is no longer an option and you're waiting to be placed into the adoption unit, many foster families will kind of know what I'm talking about. If you're not there yet, I reach out to me. I can make a video about that because that's a very strange place to be. Um, but I hope this was helpful. Again, sorry this was so long, um, but sometimes that just happens when I have these breaks. Um, also, I've had a lot of questions about why our adoption video, we had two that we posted. Um, one is the car parade and the other one was the adoption video. I don't know why that was removed. We, I, we, um, I have contacted YouTube uh, a couple of times. I'm going back and forth with them, trying to understand this contract that they said that I signed, but I don't remember signing this. So, um, because my channel's not monetary base, at least not yet, <laughs> maybe one day. Um, but so I don't know. So I had to put the video on private because I didn't want it to be removed because I really did work very hard on that video and there was almost 600 views to it. So, and I was hopeful that that would encourage and inspire people to consider adoption. But um, for those of you who have been very sweet and very concerned, <laughs> I don't know is my answer. Um, but I'm working hard at trying to get that reinstated. But I do believe um, everybody is still able to watch the car parade adoption video, uh, which is still sweet and cute and, and, and whatnot. But I just, I feel bummed that our adoption video is not accessible right now. So I'm so sorry about that. But either way, just know that I do have it. I'm just trying to figure out what the heck is going on with YouTube. Why would, why would that be removed? I don't know. If any of you guys might have a suggestion or a thought, that would be wonderful. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, thank you so very much. And thank you so much to all of our brand new subscribers. Guys, we are almost at 300 people. Like, this is crazy. I love that this community is growing. I love that this village is growing. And I love having more people come on for this ride and they're interested in foster care, they're interested in adoption. I just think it's amazing. So thank you, thank you, thank you so very much for subscribing to this channel and clicking the like button. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. And I will see you guys next time.